Hello all. In today's session, we are going to see how to paint a bird's head in watercolor. We are going to cover the beak, eye and the face part of the bird and I'll tell you how to achieve a realistic effect. The colors required to paint the blue and gold meko head are lime yellow, Cambodia yellow, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, some shades of grey, green achieved using these mixes, a light tint of red and also some purple. Let's get started. I'm starting with the first washes. I use a lime yellow for the top part of the forehead and gradually as it goes back I'm going to drop in some cerulean blue and in between I'm going to mix cerulean blue and lime yellow on the paper to get a bright shade of green. Now we are moving on to the beak. I started with a very transparent grey colour and I am adding in the grey wherever it is required from the reference photo. There is a highlight on the beak as in the reference photo so I am leaving a place blank. I am starting to build colour by slowly increasing the hue of the grey colour and I am building this beak. Why we have to add multiple times is it is that only then it will give the feel of volume. If we directly add a dark shade of grey or black it will give us a flat feeling. So in order to achieve that effect I am starting from, from a very transparent colour and moving on to darker shades and also maintaining that highlight. In order to smoothen that highlight, I am washing the brush thoroughly and I am dabbing it on a piece of tissue paper and I am softening the edges so that it doesn't have any hard edges. Keep continuing till you feel it is close enough with the reference photo. Now that I feel the first wash for the top beak is done, I am going to do the same for the lower beak. But for the lower beak, I could see a tint of blue color. So I am adding in some cerulean blue and also leaving a small white gap which creates the 3D effect of the bird's beak and I am going to repeat the same process which I did for the top beak.
Now I'm going to add a very very transparent yellow color to the eye part. You can hardly see any color there. It should be a very very transparent mix. Once it is slightly absorbed and there is only a glaze of paint left, I'm going to drop in few drops of cerulean blue here and there. If you see the reference photo very close enough, which I'm going to show you in the short time. You can see these two shades in the eye. Also, I'm dropping in a reddish purple mixture on the cheek part. I'm dropping in a transparent mixture across the cheek, all over the cheek, and I'm blocking the area. Once I blocked all the areas, I'm going to drop in a slightly darker color of this reddish purple in those spots which seem to be reddish to me from the reference photo. From the reference photo, I feel that the beak should be a little more darker so that I am going to continue to build up the shade of the beak now. Also as said, there is a light tint of yellow and blue around the pupil area which we have covered. Now I am going to do a darker part of the grey in the tongue area. The tongue area is the darkest as it is inside and does not have any light. So I am adding a darker shade of grey there. I'm going ahead and adding the nose part and also going ahead with the eye. I'm using a darker shade of sepia. I have mixed cerulean blue, cobalt blue and a tint of pale red to it to create and also some orange to create this shade. If you have sepia, you can directly use it. Now I'm adding in some black to the bottom part of the eye as in the reference photo. There is a small highlight just above the pupil which I've marked with the pencil line. You have to leave that as it is to create life from the eye.
I am now re-wetting the forehead and I am going to add some bombos yellow and also cerulean blue and I am brightening the base of the color. The place where the head and the cheek is connected should have a brown color, the hair should be brown there. So I am dropping in some base first wash of brown and I am going ahead to add the head colors. Once this is over, I am adding some sap cream so that it gets a feel of hair from the base color which is lighter version of it. I am going to create my minute hair like textures in the direction of the hair flow as seen from the reference photo. Here we go, we have come to the end of the session. Hope this was useful. Please try and enjoy. Thank you.